So yeah, I hope uh, everyone is doing great. So today we will be looking at uh, creating a pitch deck. So probably you all have a um, uh, concept of the yoga. You, you all know the concept sure. about preparing, you know, how to prepare a pitch deck, preparing a pitch deck. And we've read it in many places, right? Maybe some of you uh, like follow uh, Shark Tank. Is there anyone who have seen or who follows Shark Tank? Just in case. Yeah, yeah, it is just a, like there is just a program, a real program that is about pitching or presenting your um, business for investors. That's a TV show actually, and uh, yeah, for those people who want, they will have a deal in large amount of dollars and things like that. Anywho, so we're going to look about how to create a pitch deck. What is the main elements of pitch deck, and what do we need to include? So we can start from the definition, like. So they are concise presentation that helps investors and clients understand more about your business, including product, service, goals, and strategies. And we can so we yeah, we can consider them as a normal presentation or other presentation. But what makes it different is when you provide or when you present your pitch deck, you are expecting for your uh, audience, which is the client or the investor, to be attracted and to be involved in your business. Okay, to be part of your business, not to just you know shake their heads and say, wow, that, that is nice, and they go. So you're going to provide your work or your, uh, uh, um, your um, actually, you, your business in a way that you, it cannot attract other people. So they're also known as marketing decks. They are primarily used by business trying to convince clients or investors to work with them. And it's a short presentation to help someone else learn about your business quickly. So the primary goal is to close a deal, not to close a deal actually, rather it is to convince a separate party, whether it's an investor or a client, to continue the conversation with you about your business. So by saying that it's not to cl close a deal, we didn't, it doesn't mean that at the end, or its end goal is to close a deal actually, but uh, you don't expect the investors or clients to be attracted and to be involved in your business as fast as they have seen your, uh, as fast as they know about your business rather if they kept in touch which means they are a little bit interested but they will have you will be able to provide more information and more uh, to attract them more into your business uh so yeah having the chance to be in touch for a long time also it's one of the goals and there are this essential components so by this components we mean that here we're going to see the elements so when we when we are going to include the elements or when trying to cover the elements or when trying to present our pitch deck there those are the main things these are the main things that we need to focus on so in every way or in everything that we're going to mention we need to make sure that these components are uh, are being expressed uh, well so the first one is your mission or vision which is uh, yeah, which is the main thing okay what is my mission and what do i need to uh in in what step do i need to see myself in this terms of years or in the future and the second one is the problem you're solving which is very very important so the success of your business or the success of, oh yeah your startup will depend on what type of problem are you solving right so um yeah every inventory uh, and uh, every uh, actually inventions every inventions are uh, generated from problems so if you are able to solve a great problem or the problem of many people then you more likely your business is going to succeed right so the problem you're sorry you need to make you need to know or you need to focus on the problem that you're solving while preparing every part of your pitch deck you know like at the end like you, you might be working or you might be writing on the marketing or the financial thing you need to write something that are, that is not going to be against the step problem that you have seen or that you're trying to solve. The other one is the market size of the, the opportunity, which is also related with the second one, right? So as I told you, if you're trying to, if your uh, solution is going to solve the problem of many people, then you have a large market size, right? That is related with the second one. So, so you need to focus on the market size of the opportunity and the product, of course, what it makes, what makes it unique. We have talked about the value propositions last time. So yeah, what makes it unique? You need to mention that. 
tra uh, traction and revenue, which is how is how are you trying to implement your uh, goal or how is how is it going uh, until now? I mean, how many have you sold and things like that? And then the evidence that your team can execute, which is I've done, which is also related with number five. I've done this this through this time of year or through this period. So keep those components in mind uh, and not to make anything against your missions against the program that you're serving okay while preparing every element so yeah while doing that what elements are we supposed to um are we supposed to include there are many elements uh, some elements actually that are mentioned in your uh, technical documents also focusing on that here you might find some of them being merged and being uh, uh, and or labeling differently that is okay at the end, you're going to follow. Uh, at, the, at the end, they're going to follow the same uh, core principle, and they are the same. But you can see the layout in, in the technical document. So the first one is the introduction, of course. So that is the first step to introduce the your audience, which is the investor or the client about your business. So um, it should tell the audience who you are and what the business does. And this is a great place to include your value proposition and any other messaging you believe is important for as an introduction. And what, what do you need to focus on is if the first impression is not going to be that good, actually you need to be impressive throughout the presentation, but really the first presentation matters, right? You can use different type of creative methods of introducing your uh, business. It might depend on the investor or on the line that it, that is going to hear the presentation also which part is going to which part are they going to focus more but so introducing your business make it simple and creative so it is your first tip in order to give them a highlight and an introduction to what type of business you're doing and what type of product do you have in hand okay the second one is pose yourself the problem statement and representation as i told you this is the most important part you can consider it as like uh post yourself as a solution so so you're going to state a problem a really um a problem that you you're going to make the problem a, a very serious problem okay like which means um it's not that uh, exaggerating the problem but try to show or try try methods in order to show the audience uh a maybe you know the audience might not be part of that it, it might not this problem might not be their problem so you need to find out to show them that the problem that you've shown is every problem in your environment or for some specific groups but it's a serious problem okay so in order for the audience to understand you can also use a different types of methods to show them how serious that problem is and so that's at the end when you come to when you bring yourself as a solution for that problem so it's going to make a big thing so okay well she's like they're trying to solve a really hard problem and things like that so you need to show them uh, the problem in a very clear way show show a problem or a gap in your industry or in industry you mean like an industry that you're trying to solve yeah that your company intends to solve or fulfill so inv investors and potential clients must understand how your business exists so if you're not solving your target market's pain point you can't effectively de demonstrate the need for your product or service so um, just yeah that's all written here so you need to give a brief layout of the industry landscape where your company will be positioned within it and what will set your company apart from the competition also when you mention about the placement or the landscape where in the, your where your industry is going to be positioned you need to relate it with the fact that since there are many um targeted customers or targeted people with this problem at this area placing my solution over here will make a, a good benefit for the business okay so yeah uh, try to state the problem very well and then the recommendation which is the solution that you're providing um audible right very good yeah okay. okay and then there's the market size and opportunity so then which is to show your marketing platforms and how they are purposefully built for a business that is growing so you'll show that you're thinking ahead okay which is you're planning for more and uh yeah for more so you need to include the summary of your market research so that they need to know, sorry, they need to know um, 
proposing this idea or proposing the solution it's not just came from it doesn't came randomly okay so you need to show them not every point of your market research and not every process of the market research but the summarized form of the market research you need to include that and then lay out your marketing plans and explain how you intend to market your product it might be email marketing social marketing and why have you chosen those types of marketings uh, type of marketing and other digital channels so nothing that you're prepared to start marketing your business from day one also uh, probably they might not do them, them them they might not understand it depends on your audience at the end but they might not understand which types of marketing will be uh every the, the correct type of marketing or the correct way to promote your type of business or that specific type of business because the way we market and the way we sell our business our business will differ from uh, uh yeah differ from our business business to business okay so yeah Noting that you are prepared to start marketing your business from day one, if possible, bring in supporting evidence using studies, reviews, or statistics. You need to make them clear and you need to make them, yeah, uh, clear uh, that uh, they're going to, yeah, that the way that you've choose or the way that you're going to market your business is going to succeed uh, on that way, okay? Then explain your actionable marketing techniques and include your customer relationship management plan. So yeah, and it's just including, you know, that there's the thing uh, called the, uh, yeah, like how are you going to include, it's not about just making the uh, pre-business or the pre-launching marketing, but also the, the future marketing, how it is going to be going, how it is going to align with, uh, with the coming, um, we know that with the coming new the technologies it might be the te the technologies or the environment how is it going to align and integrate itself with the environment you need to include that which is your plan okay so the market will determine if you get your funding or not right because if you're operating in small markets investors might fi find that potential roi is too small or too risky to fund you. So remind that those people are investors. So they they have been selling their products for uh, large market size, or they you know they and also they understand the business, right? So um, short business, I mean small markets might not interest them that much, or it might be like a risk for them to give or to fund that business. So. Um, yeah, like try try to determine your market size very clearly and try to show them, uh, yeah, very clearly and also in a not in an ambitious way but in a realistic way. And using source from your, your research, so your market slide will graph out past market growth and future potential market growth so that the investors can easily see what the potential of your product is. So by this, by past market growth, we might say like if it is a startup or if we are just starting, if we don't have that large history on that selling that project, uh, I mean product, we might not have that large uh, growth rate or history so that to show them for the investors, but we might include uh, businesses or the demand of your product in the environment or in the market. So that there is a demand, there is a growth of demand in the market for my product, and bringing my product with this with this unique value will be, of course, a success. You need to prove that. So, so that investors can easily see what the potential of your product is, and then the product. There is the product. So in this part, it's where you show the actual product. Okay, it depends on what type of product do you have, whether it is a service whether it is a software or a, pro a hardware, so it depends on that. So if it is a physical product and provisional photos, add provisional photos to your product, different angles. So mm -hmm. maybe if you have time, uh, actually, yeah, it's not part of the pitch deck, so you might also include the video of your product working, but it's, it's, it's a presentation. You might want to keep it small, right? And uh, sometimes there will arise uh, some questions and depending on the questions, you also might have another verification and another answer, including the video to play. But you need to add the photo if it is a product. I mean, if it's called product, you need to add a uh, picture of your product. And if it is an app or it's an online service, 
consider adding screenshots that show of its monique, uh, most uh, unique features. So in this, it's not specifically about uh, your service since you might not going to be able to provide this type of uh, evidence, but yeah, for future use. And then there's the traction we've mentioned leads us on the intro level. This is uh, all about the growth of your business, okay? You, so imagine if you had already sold something with trying, you know, by your own and you try to sell, you've tried to enter the business by your own on the first place and then you're asking the investors, since I see I have a proof that within my capability I have tried to sell, I've tried to do the product and sale and to have a, this much amount of pro profit, but it is too small since I'm not that rich or I'm, I can't fend myself that much. But the reason for you to enter my market is in order I'm not able to provide the financial things more to grow my business, then you, I need your, your help. That is the point, right? So it is a really good thing if you had already started working or uh, yeah, working working on that business by yourself, even if it is on small level. So you will have, by this I mean that you will have some amount of history, which is the number of sales you've made, the major goals you've achieved till now, okay? So you need to show them and then the next thing. So this is the hockey growth chart. Mostly it is used for large amount of growth rate and large amount of company, but it is also be able to adapt for small amount of startups and things like that, okay? So here we can see that there is our history and there is the, fu the future. And probably the magic is going to be the, after they have provided the fund and after they, uh, yeah, after they, they are involved in the market, it, it, it also might cause, uh, take some time also but yeah there is you're going to provide your history so for the future it's going to be uh, it's it's going to grow a lot so the reason for this uh, maybe might be uh the lack of money like for this increment i mean the decrement here it might be the lack of uh and or that you're not that much handed okay and then the team which is also important so that uh, the other thing is even if you have a brilliant idea and you're doing good so you need to have a discipline and you need to have uh, they need to have a confidence in your team right so you need to include numbers which is how many how or how amount how many amount of people are working on your business and also what is their specific roles in that working so that the investor is going to be confident on on the all the group that you have not only you and not only on the business idea and the past history, but also for the future, like his, they're going to believe that those people can move the business. In include numbers, we also mean that include yourself. So those people can move the this business to the next step, or they are good for the future. So uh, it will include your core team members. The investor is interested in the drive of these people and what makes them unique enough to see this project to its success. And under each core team member, consider including the bullet description or titles that show why they are central to your mission. It, it is, uh, so uh, maybe it's, it, it, it's also you need to make a balance between like you might mention something that your team members have done, which is not related with the project so that the investors might have a confidence on the personality of your team members. But you need to make a balance between that and the fact that you you need to add you need to add uh, things or concepts uh, that uh, about things or like uh, about how that that team member specifically is related or is adding is making an addition to the to this business okay to the specific business okay so um, you never know which part is going to interest them since the, their back history or their success maybe if those are the people who have won some prizes and things like that you know those are the type of people that you can put your confidence on they might think like that so you, you you can make a balance between that and including the numbers and the specifications about your team members and then the competition you need to put uh, uh, uh your competitors okay you're not going to define all your competitors since you're not about to um promote them right but you need to point out key points that is related or that you want to prove about uh, other business uh, no your business which is 
points about your business that makes you better than other business. So on those parts, you're going to put, put your competitions and how do you think, since of course there, it's, going, there, it's going to have some factors, right? If there are many competitors, then it's going to be um, a little bit hard for you to win through the market, right? So, um, but also since you can't hide it, Already, those people are investors, and the world know about every company. It's it's not something hidden. It's putting some elements about that company, and also putting your challenge, the challenge that, that you're going to face because of uh, because there are many companies like uh, yours, and it will make you somehow reliable or trustworthy, and then putting out things that you are going to excel from other from your other competitors will make you like uh, the investors to choose you or to say, well, this business is, is doing, you know, it has some value to add to the market. So mention uh, it's not about the details of other companies or your competitors, but you need to put out, illustrate your competitors and uh, some uh, key points about the things that you th that you are going to beat from other companies also the thing that you think is going to be challenging for you because of the, the existence of other companies like yours. And then there is the financials, okay? So uh, it's, this will outline, this the pitch data line should contain your company's projected growth over the next three or five years. So the investors are mostly more of about the finance, right? So they are really interested about the financial aspects, the financial things. I, so you need to put they're going to calculate everything, by the way. If, like, especially if they are going to do, give you some money for us, like in this, they're going to cal calculate every cost. So, um, then, like, you need to project uh, how your company is going to grow and how you're going to benefit. You're going to have a benefit, and also how what benefits are going to how are going to are going to are they going to get from your um, profit for the next three and five years. So I'll learn details about your business model and finance, okay? So here you might use colors, bar charts, and different type of illustrations to show them, uh, to understand the financial aspects clearly. Yeah, like it's, you cannot predict for sure, like accurately about where you will be in the next three years, but investors expect to see you outline your plan and show that you have the financial knowledge to reach it okay no it might not be you might not reach that exactly that point but you need to have the illustration also they will judge they, they can judge that having this plan having this marketing size and solving this amount of problem for the market it is not going to be feasible to have this amount of growth for the next three or five years so it is it is feasible they're going to have that judgment so they will also see how uh, good are how good are you in predicting or like guessing, understanding the market size, understanding the, the growth. Okay, since you're not just going to depend on your work while doing the growth rate and the market uh, while doing the growth rate and predicting the growth, you're not going you're not just going to depend on your product rate. You're going to depend on the social aspects, the country, like the uh, the inflation rates and other, and also the competitor, your competitors. So since you're going to include other uh, factors, it's going to show them how good are you in predicting the, um, your business. So you can explain your economic plan here. This includes your operating structures and distribution channels, as well as your plan to make money. Since uh, you're going to include, I'm going to post, I'm going to need this amount of money in order to run my business. It's also need to be to include it on the financial aspect. You'll also uh, explain here about the operating structure. There's going to be the manager, that's going to be this amount of workers to be paid for, for labor and things like that. And finally, it's the investment and use of funds, right? So this whole process is about getting the funds. So asking the fund uh, at the end. Okay. Regarding financial projection for three to five years, if my business is new, where am I going to keep my company's projected growth over the next three or five years? So it's more of going to be, as I was discussing, the prediction 
about the financial if it is about the future it's going to you're going to predict the business so it's not uh, that a problem that your company is very new uh, if you have heard throughout the discussion we've been mentioning that if you're probably if you're if you're a startup or, or if you have short history of um, being in the market yeah we were mentioning those words so for the but for, for the financial projection you need to understand the market and your competitors and the uh, socioeconomic activities and things like that and you can do the projection for three to five years depending on that you don't need to be you don't need to have uh, you, don't, you don't you don't need to depend that much on your back history okay is that clear okay so yeah uh, the investment and use of funds so just but you can make it like instead of just asking for a certain amount of funding let them know what you plan to do with the money so like you can make use different types of methods so just be creative and you can just say like on the previous uh content or elements you can mention that i need this amount of money for this 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 task but you're not asking, but you're just letting them know there is a critical action or a critical work that needs to be done with this amount of money, but they already know that you don't have that since you're standing in front of them, okay? So also let them know what you plan to do with the money, and yeah, it's going to be reasonable. When you justify your ask, it helps build trust and lets investors take you seriously. So the final point is you're going to ask for calculated amount of fund and you're going to prove them for what purpose are you thinking to use that fund for okay yeah and then we we will hope that there let the, you, you will be you will give the hope yeah, i mean you'll give the fund so can we depend on the planned project fund which one which planned project fund Never file. I think I am a little, I didn't give your question very correctly. Rufail, can you describe that? Can we depend on the planned project fund? For what purpose? You're going to... Yeah, it's a little bit confusing. You're going to just make a financial projection or... Okay, so I think what you're trying to say is on the planned project fund are you going to depend on the fund that you're going to have from the investors in order to during research we plan the funds so wait okay hear me and prove me if i am uh, right or wrong okay so i told i think you're saying that can we depend on the project fund that we're going to get from the investors in order to do all the tasks that we or, or, or in order to run our business from the beginning to the end are we going to consider the trends that we're going to get from the investors? Is that your question? Okay. Okay, so that depends on what type of... Um, so what is your... Uh, since it's not practical in your case, in our case, that depends on what do you think about your business. So do you want to pr um, present your business as a startup that had already started working uh and it needs uh, like it needs a money or in its event to to grow you its market more or to large to like to wide the market i mean the business more are you asking for that type of business or do you have just the idea and the plan and things like that but nothing is on ground you haven't just tried or started to implement your work so which one is that it depends on that so it, it is you can use both methods so if you are if you think about your business like you it doesn't have any money and you're just trying to start from the scratch with the investors or you, with the fans that you're about to get then you can do that but if you think i i recommend that your business like assume that you've already started the business and it's already running and you need uh, more money or more funds in order to enlarge the business or in order to change the business from startup to other level or in order to be, make it a big startup okay 
profile am I clear? So it's going to be your decision. What type of business is that? Yeah, thank you. Um, other questions? Do we have other questions or we can just say that it was clear? So if it is clear, you can just show me some emojis. Okay. Yeah, then. So we can end the session here. Thank you guys for being here.